Hi, and welcome to this video on how to create customer transformation rules. Hi, I'm Eric, and um, I got a question the other day. Um, somebody asked me, how do I use the customer transformation rule? And that's a great question. So um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let, let, let me show you. Here is Business Central. and. Um, so we have the data exchange definition where we can define file types for for banks and import exports uh, it's pretty uh, pretty cool um, as part of that you might end up in a situation where a certain field is not really in the format that you want um, and then you can apply a transformation rule um, I'm sure how they work um, so in this case here's just a simple one you can see that the transformation type is uppercase so I type test and I try it out so you can see that uh, right there. <laughs> I'm getting better at this. Uh, you, you can see the result. So this is an other case. I could do a, you know, show me a title case and there's some, some fancy uh, like substring. Uh, so let's uh, start in position two. Um, length two and let's see what that will be that'll be es um so so cool rules and, and there are there are some 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 interesting one regular expressions i'm not going to do regular expressions tonight if you want a video on regular expressions i'll do that but you have to subscribe and ring the bell and all that good stuff. And let, let me know in the comments that you actually want a video on regular expressions and you want to see it to the end. Okay, back to uh, the, the non-programming here. So what we can see that there's a custom transformation rule. So let's try that. I select custom, I hit update and I get nothing. So that was the question. How, how do how do custom work? There's no new files up here. It's not like we can specify a code unit number or anything like that. So what's up with custom? Let me show you. So if I can find here is the good old Visual Studio Code, newest edition, um, and. Uh, no surprise, the secret source is that we need to subscribe to an event. So let me start by creating a code unit. Custom transformation AL. Uh, that's a code unit. Let me see if I can make sure I don't hit something that's already in this database. Um, Custom transformation, there we go. Okay, so in the last video I did on events, I did not show a relatively new feature in VS Code. So let me show that today. So I go to the command palette and now there is a command called find event, AL find events. So we can try that out. So now we get a list of all the events that are exposed in the symbols that we have. So in this case, these are the symbols I have. So all the events that are exposed from those symbols are on this list. Um, so, and, and, and you, you can search, search and, and sometimes you know, on, after, run. Oh, you see then there's a, a ton of them, on, after, uh, something, something, something. Uh, but you can also search for, in this case, I search for a customer and that makes more sense. If I search for sales dash post, 
you can see that I actually now search for the object name, not the name of the uh, the event. So now I, I get all the events that's in the sales dash postcode unit on Brady. Um, so th this is a pretty cool tool. Um, so what we want to search for is custom. The problem is that custom is a subset of a customer. So so that's kind of noisy. We get all sort of crazy stuff. So let's try to search for transformation. On before text transformation in a report config package process, that's not us. On transformation from the table transformation rule, that sounds promising. On create transformation rules, uh, that's not quite what we want either. On before data format update is allowed. Transformation, table transformation rule. So it looks like the on transformation could be a promising uh, candidate. So, be and now you can see that the, the, it, it's, let me, it's kind of dumb. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's it's suboptimal uh, because it just inserted the event subscriber at the cursor uh, and uh, that's not really IntelliSense or anything like that. So let's undo this, go back, find event and oh no, I was just about to send it. Now let me place the cursor in a good spot. Find event, uh, transformation, on transformation. So how do we verify that this is the right one? You can, you can trust me because, hey, you can trust me, but maybe we should figure out. So if I go onto this, even though this is text string, I press F12, I'm now taking to the uh, location of the event so we can see here's the uh, publisher that's great so let's control f and find this one in here and we can see that that's part of a case transformation type of dook -dook -dook. in case of custom call the event bingo that's exactly what we want so the only thing we need to do now is basically to um, do something, do something custom. So uh, how about we do that? Um, and what do we get? We get the, the transformation code. If that's interesting, we get the input text and the output text. And I do believe actually that the output text is already populated let's just check that for a second let's check that again here um, so new value equal old value so it's already populated you see that up here uh, so if we want to do something in here we probably need to start by uh, setting the output text to nothing. Um, what should we do? How, how about we create a inverse string? I don't think, we, uh, let's see, do we have that as a, one of the new fancy uh, .NET thingies? No, we don't. Okay, so let's create uh, that one. So we probably need a integer and then let's do for e equal equal one to the string length of input text do and then we'll go output text is appended with input text and then we'll do index uh, now so 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 if we just do this right then we'll just get a copy of 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 the uh, of the the input text, so we don't want that. So let's do the length of the input text minus our position. So if it one and its length, then 
plus one, I think. I think that's right. Let's see if this is a inverse string feature or So let's edit this one instead of a case we now select custom. And I type Hogart and I hit update. And uh, we got the inverse Hogart. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty good. So, what if you have more than one trans custom transformation rule? Well, then what you need to do is go back in here. Um, and you have to, because the only thing you're give, the only information you're getting is the, the transformation code. So this will be that one. So in that case, we will need, ha, uh, that's case, we'll need to case transformation code off. And we'll do AAA and we will do this and end case. Um, and maybe, depending on how, maybe we want this one outside inside. I don't know. No, let's, let's try it out to see that this one still works. So we will test and this time outside YouTube. That should be able to it. That's excellent. That works. So let's create another one, AA2 test, and we'll do custom again. And uh, we will type the end. Update, we get nothing because we exactly put this one. So this one will cover all the rules. So if we really want to be good, um event subscribers then we really need to make sure that we do it like this and do that output text is blanks within the rule because what can happen um and what you have to expect when working with so let's try this again up uh, i'll just type test and we get test here so now this one is working the way it was intended to work. Oh, let's get out of this one. Come on. Transformation rules. We'll do the. Oh, yeah. So this one, let's do the end here. Perfect. So what what you have to expect whenever you're writing code there's two rules whenever you're writing code on an event that at least two rules that are very important one is that you cannot expect to be alone there can be events fire the same there can be other subscribers subscribing to the same event before or after you you don't know so your code needs to be prepared and that's kind of goes into the second rule that um, is, is the way that this code could fail. What if, what if it's blank? What, what happens now if, if, if I do a blank here? Okay, nothing happened, but maybe that's because it never goes into the event for I, I equal one to zero. But you need to make sure that unless it's really, really on purpose that you throw an error in an event, that an event do not throws an error. Uh, right now, I think that that not, but, but there's a fair amount of bad event subscribers, even on on app source apps, that in case of a missing setup record or running in a company that's different or something, like that, suddenly they fail because you had not set that app up correctly in, in another company or something like that. And then a random subscriber fails. Uh, and it's really, really hard for you. You can, you can block the system. If you subscribe to the 
the right extension or so the right event and you it errors out for some reason you can render the entire system inoperable um so think about that so rule number one make sure that that your code is resilient to other subscribers rule number two do not throw arrows unless it's really 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 on purpose um, so that's how you create a custom transformation rule um, you see that the custom entity in a few places around the system uh, it's not very intuitive for, for for customers to know what to do with it uh, i suspect that this pattern goes away because there is another pattern that replaces it me being that this should not be a fixed option this should be an enum so if you want to add a rule you add sort of enum and then you 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 go down that route so this, so the user will choose a a nice rule and stuff like so i think the the custom pattern was kind of came to life during the uh the beginning of uh events with the uh, nav 2017 and there about um but it's probably going away anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this and uh, i will be back soon with uh, more videos